In this video, I'll take you through my own process when it comes to inking the illustrations I did for the book I wrote, which is called The Portal Guardians. In order to achieve what I wanted, I needed to work in two separate applications. One called Procreate and the other one is Adobe Illustrator. The reason for me to choose two applications instead of just one is that I wanted my inking to be done in a vector-based piece of software. That means that I can always scale up my illustration to any use case I can find, if I want to do a poster or whatever. I might not know that from the get-go, what I want to use this illustration for and how big I want to blow it up, so it's nice to have it in vector so I can always do that after the fact. I do my initial sketch in Procreate, which is a pixel-based software, because Procreate really offers the best feeling of pen on paper. It feels natural and it feels very authentic. I then export that into Illustrator, where I start my inking. The main difference between a vector and a raster-based piece of software is that a raster based where there you can actually if you zoom in you can see the pixels there so the pixels are the squares you see here and when you zoom out your eye does not compute those it just goes in flows in to this soothing line but if you were to scale this up let's say you wanted to boost it up to some big poster or something then this would show up in the print therefore Sometimes it makes sense not doing it like that, but actually drawing in a vector-based piece of software. Because if you do that, let me just give you a hint here. If I, now I'm in Illustrator, and the difference here from what you saw before is that since this is vector-based, if I scale this up, I zoom in, no rasterization appears, except for what I do with my clumsy fingers here. But I guess you get my point now. So what's awesome about this is that you'll be able to do your inking and it's super sharp here where you have white against black. And I really want to have that uh, in my inking. And then I can afterwards export that back into Procreate and there I can then do my coloring, etc., um, without it being a problem ever. But let's dive into Procreate. As you see here, it's uh, it, it since it's just a sketch, it doesn't need to have like everything fully drawn out and everything being perfect, but it does have you know the overall basics. Uh, you can see I have something going on here that doesn't really it's not part of the drawing itself. And you can see that I drew a circle here. I drew a circle right to to start his head out and I didn't fully get rid of that and you know all of those drawing through kind of things it doesn't really matter at this point but uh, what I want to do here is to export this so I can pull it into Illustrator and do uh, my inking perfectly in there so I go up here into the actions menu and I'll share this and I'll simply just share it as a JPEG um, and I'll just save this, export successfully, awesome. So now I can go back to Illustrator. What you need to make sure of when you set up your canvas to do your inking is to make sure that you get the resolution that you want the final artwork to be in. Meaning that when we export this illustration from Illustrator back into Procreate, and need to do our coloring, etc. Then, you know, what we export from here will be the resolution that you will be working in in Procreate. So even though we're working in vector here, it's still super important to be mindful of the aspect ratio, the 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 size you want this to be in, and and uh, your use case. Just for the export. You can of course go in and change this and scale things up because it's vector. I'll scale it down however you see fit, but it's just tiresome to do and, and a needless process if you already at this point know exactly what your use case is, right? So here I choose quite a large canvas here uh, and this is actually based on uh, a paper structure, paper uh, 
that I am using when I do my coloring in Procreate, that, that paper has this format and it's an overlay I'll use to give it a paper feel uh, when I do my coloring afterwards. So uh, this, is, this is actually what determined my resolution here. So I'm sure that I don't go above that resolution of this paper structure and that I don't go below it because there's no reason for that. Let's make it as big as, as I can. So uh, I'll just create file and then you are, uh, then we're good to go. So here I had my hotboard in the right dimensions. Um, so to begin with, just a short introduction into the tools here. So out on the left here, you have the basic vector tools that you need. You have um, this pencil bad boy and this eraser. Those are the two that I use most. And down here, you'll have your colors and, and the settings for these tools you choose out here. So if I choose this one, you see now I get additional tooling out here that I can then choose from. Out here, you have your layers and text stuff and settings of things that you want to apply, right? So here I have my layers. And down here, I have some settings for if I had a, a, a line in here and I've chosen that, it would show up here all the settings for that one. I don't use those tools that often. So this is more how I use the tool for this exact purpose. Um, if you want more detailed on all the tools in here, you should definitely go visit Adobe's website. They have a lot of tutorials for exactly this application. And they have a lot of built-in help as well, um, where you can browse tutorials and take a tour guide and gestures and everything in here. So I would definitely recommend you doing that uh, if that's your need. Um, but what I wanted to show you here is how I work. So I now have the exported photo and I have it uh, exported here. And if nothing happens when you press on photos, you need to go into your settings and make sure that this application has access to your photos. Uh, you're not prompted from this application directly. Uh, so you need to do that in order for it to to give, gain access. Um, but I have done so in my here. So there it is. There you go. That's the illustration I wanted. And I want to have some space around my illustration. So I'll just scale it down here. On the right hand side, I can scale it down and I'll center it on the canvas. And down here you get in context tooling as well on what you've chosen here. So what I want to do is I want to change the opacity. So I'll take that one down two steps and then I'll afterwards, uh, I'll lock the layer like that. So now this is locked. You can see that by the icon there and um, locked. <laughs> so. That means that I can now draw on top of this safely without moving it around or, or anything. So if I go up here to the um, to the layers, I have my layer here with the image that's locked. So I'll just add a new layer here. So now this is my safe zone. I can close this one again. This is the layer I want. Okay. So tooling wise, I'll go over here. You see I have the pen tool here, but that's actually not the one I want to use when inking. I want to go in and press the small triangle there, and that gives you the different kinds of tools hidden inside that icon there. And what I've found working for me is the blob brush, that one right there. That one works for me. And um, what it does is that, of course, it has some basic uh, settings here that would work for the most part. Um, so what you'll see is that I've chosen just a basic flat and uh, it has my settings down here, 10. If I chose choose that one, I can go larger or smaller any way I want to. For this resolution I have here, I found that for the most part, 
uh, it would be around 12 to somewhere like 18 but as you see I've I've really zoomed in on the image here so I think I want the strokes to be quite large actually so I, I think I'll begin at like somewhere around 22 or so and the color as you see is black so I go down here on the smoothening so what this does is if I just try to draw something here if I take this all the way up to 100 if I start drawing now you can see that if I jiggle around like crazy it helps me smooth out that uh, exact draw, that um, pen stroke so when I'm juggling you can also see a trails behind now for you it's hard to see where I have my my pencil but I'm far ahead of it right now and that's because it's calculating and it's trying to help me out smoothening this line here I feel smoothing doesn't really help me that much it's it 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 becomes very unnatural and very computer like and I like the small jiggly but I don't like it too much though I also like it to look as if I'm I know what I'm doing <laughs> so I'll take it down to 40 and that's like the standard setting um, that works for me so when I draw now the lag is smaller and I actually get still a little help smoothing it out but not too much then another thing that I like to tweak is you go down here to the settings here here we have a lot of settings I need to apply so actually I don't like the tap it ends the tap it ends is where it's always ending up in this very sharp you see it's super sharp no matter what I do it's like very sharp at the end I don't like that so I remove the tap it ends you see the preview up here how it changes uh, and you can see that if I add it again you can see the preview changes so this is much more what I'd like I also tend to have this setting of um, um, the angle to be around uh, 75 you can also just type that in like that and that gives it just the quite an, an angle so it so it becomes thicker in 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 certain parts of the curve um, and I like that because it really helps you give some dynamics into your strokes and the roundness I always have around 50 um, pressure dynamics though if I go into that one I would really put the pressure dynamics all the way up what you'll see here now is that when I start painting here now I'm not pressuring that hard not pressuring that up and then I start pressuring you can see oh it gets thick and it gets so I can really control how it how it turns out to be and how thick the stroke gets by the pressure sensitivity of the Apple pencil and that is amazing so this is my basic setting my basic setup of my my brush here and if I just go delete this layer and create a new one let's just start inking so the cool thing about the digital medium is like the zoom as well right so I can go in and do some details so this one I let's start with a brow up here so what I would do here is I'll leg it thick there small there thick there and then go down and thick there and then end it up as small as possible there at the end so that is an exact line I wanted this is very much the power of, of this inking tool in general so this is very much about pressuring I wanted to be thick and easing out when I wanted to be thin again so whoop and this this is how I do it see there it didn't become as thick as, as I really wanted it to because I feel like the light might come from from up here somewhere so I feel the shadow might need to be below here 
Sorry, it should be thick here. Thick, thick, thick. There we go. That looks much better, I think. Yeah, and then if I need to do these whiskers here, this needs to be very thin, so I would go in again and change this one down so I don't get it too thick. So now I'll just do that. Oh, just a quick stroke. And that gives me the whiskers, right? There you go. That's it. And now I can increase the stroke again. But this leads me to show you guys yet another cool tool, which is what we have up here. So what I can do here is I can actually delete stuff. Um, I can pull this one down again. So I have some of the same controls you see here as I had on the other one, which is very, very cool. So now by zooming in, I can now start removing that part. Whoop, now it's gone. So that is just this neat trick to, to, to have that whisker appear here as well as here. I can see it goes over here, even though it doesn't. If I had to do this with wheel ink, I would need to stop the line there and then proceed at the other end. Here I can just like draw through and remove that stroke afterwards. A very important thing that I need to mention when it comes to um, this blob brush, and one of the reasons I chose that instead of just the paint brush and one of the others is the tr is the setting down here. Um, if I go back here, you can see it has merge brush strokes as a setting. This setting right here, merge brush strokes. If I click that one on, this is very important because I really love this. Um, what it does is when when the lines they intersect as it does up here, what it will do is that it will merge this whole thing into one uh, shape. So when I open this layer, you can see all the shapes here. There are so many paths and combined shapes and stuff. And really, I don't need all of these. You know, I can I can see that. When I select this one here, you can see I select them each. But it takes a lot of computing power having all of this separated, I found. And also, it doesn't give you a very good overview of what's what. Um, so it, it, when you have a lot of strokes here, it, it becomes useless. So the cool thing here is that when you have the merge brush strokes, they will, whenever ever your strokes they uh, intersect, they will merge into one compound shape. So let's um, let's just try that out. And the way to do it is just to have that setting on, and then let's uh, let's just try with his paw here. So I will go in. I will of course bump it up to twenty two again. And I'll just start. There you go. So There's a lot of things going on here. So, okay, so that's his par. Now, when I open up my layer set here, you can see now it's in one group. So I can actually see what's there. What is this? It's in there. And it's, there's some weird small paths here. I don't know, I don't need that. So I can actually go in and clean up the vectors if I want to do that as well. But what I have here is one compound shape. So I could actually just you know, now it's in a group that doesn't really matter, but it's easy for me to get an overview now in layers out here. What's what? And I don't really need all of these things here. So that's a very powerful trick inside Illustrator as well. Here I have my final illustration. 
inked apps and uh, as you see here I have a few layers up here um, I have my drawing below everything which was how we started out and then I have my mole in a separate layer and then I have my outline of my hands there and then I did some feathering, some scribblings in order to establish some shadows here. So here we have the final illustration. I really hope this video was useful for you and somewhat likable. If so, then please like it and share it.